they're on almost every page of the family photo albums. Gilbert and Angelo, twin brothers, both bricklayers, and they even worked together. They were inseparable right until the very last day. This is my husband Gilbert. He's with his twin brother Angelo. By July, he was very unwell. He had lost a lot of weight, 13 kilos, I think. We knew he had cancer because of the asbestos. My father died on the 11th of April. And three months later, his twin, my uncle, told us he was ill. We didn't even have time to mourn because we lived through the same thing for another two years until his brother died. All of us in the family went through the exact same thing. Back then, we didn't know how dangerous it was. Actually, both of them, Angelo and Gilbert, would joke around and throw balls of it at each other during their lunch breaks. They didn't even wear a dust mask or anything. No protective measures at all. The family isn't alone. Others have lost their loved ones. This is a photo from when he was working. Yves was a bricklayer too, and died from exposure to asbestos, just like his dad, his brother, and his uncles too. His wife also fell ill after ironing her husband's overalls, which were contaminated with asbestos fibers. When he'd come home, his hair was completely white. It was covered in it. He'd have some in his ears. I'd boil his clothes for four hours. And is that how you fell ill? And that's how I fell ill. When I'd empty his pockets, my hands would come out white. I think the state is also responsible for this, the bosses too. And why the states? Don't tell me you think the state didn't know anything about it. For years, asbestos was used in factories, building sites, and even in schools. And people are suffering the effects of its widespread use today. In France, 3,000 people die every year after being exposed to the fibres. And the sad forecast estimates 100,000 deaths by 2025. Although it's been known to cause cancer since the 1960s, asbestos was only banned at the end of the 1990s. 30 years of disregard for its effects, or complicity, according to organisations. We knew about it and didn't do anything. Even worse, manufacturers, authorities were complicit in the matter. Health authorities were complicit too. They allowed people to use it and even tried to hide the scale of the scandal that was to come. All of them were complicit in this matter and should have come forward and talked about it. A hundred thousand deaths by the end of the epidemic. It's a license to kill. Millions of victims and just as many files. Many people gained compensation from the civil courts, but for activists, a crucial void remains. A trial in the criminal courts. 23 years after winning a fight to remove asbestos from a university, this scientist is taking on another battle. The victims' families don't necessarily want to see people sent to prison. They first of all want to understand how this happened and who's responsible for it, and that this is made clear in the courts. The second concern is a concern about the future. The asbestos scandal is the biggest lobbying scandal we've ever had in France, with such huge consequences. There are other contaminating materials, and we must draw conclusions from what has happened and obtain a way of dealing with these kinds of health scandals in the criminal courts. But Gilbert and Angelo's family didn't get a trial. Fifteen years after the brothers' deaths, the complaint that the family filed has been dropped. It takes us back to this idea that people can be responsible for something, but aren't proven guilty. Us, the victims' families, cannot accept this impunity. They were killed. The people at the top knew it was dangerous. I just can't mourn his death while the case is left lingering.
This case hasn't been closed. Gilbert's granddaughter was only four when he died. She's on course to becoming a lawyer. Perhaps one day the family will get the justice they demand.